Free body diagrams are a common type of diagram that we draw in physics to analyze all of the forces acting on an object at once. For example, if I'm holding my coffee cup, with a free body diagram, I can see that I've got a gravitational force pulling it down, while also having a normal force from my hand holding it up, and I can see that those forces are balanced, therefore the velocity is constant, in this case zero. In this video, I'm going to show you how to draw free body diagrams using four different examples. I'm going to use a lot of common forces that I covered in my common types of forces video, which is linked here and in the description. All right, so let's uh, jump to the whiteboard and get started. In this first example, we have two people who are moving some sort of cart that's on wheels. Um, one is pulling it with a rope, one is pushing it from behind, and these three lines on the left there show that the cart is moving to the right. Whenever you see those lines on an example here, it's to show which way the object is, is moving. Note that the cart is in green. I'm using examples from a program called Positive Physics, and they highlight stuff in green to show what is the object that we're actually looking at, that we're actually drawing the forces for. So we're drawing the forces that are acting on this box, not the forces acting on, let's say, this person over here. So the first step in drawing a free body diagram is to draw a single dot. Now I usually draw it on the picture itself. You don't have to, but a lot of times it's easier if you draw it directly on the picture to show the forces that are acting on that object. There's no particular order we have to go in, but I usually start with gravity because that's a lot of times kind of the easiest one to identify. So this is on the earth, I assume, and I've got a force of gravity that's pulling downward on the box. So I'm gonna draw that in. And in parentheses, I'm gonna write earth because that's the object that's doing that force to the cart. So the earth is exerting a force on the cart or the box. Now in this case, the cart is on the ground. And so there's two surfaces that are in contact. Anytime there's surfaces in contact, there must be a normal force present. So the wheels here are touching the ground. And what I like to do is I like to highlight or draw a line where those surfaces are touching. In this case, there's surfaces touching on the bottom of the box. So if there's something touching the bottom of the box, it has to be pushing up on the box. So we've got a normal force pushing up on the box and it's the ground or the floor that's doing that normal force to the box. Also notice that that normal force is perpendicular or it's 90 degrees to the surfaces that I highlighted on the bottom there. Those are horizontal and the normal force is vertical. In this case, the only forces acting vertically are the normal force and the gravitational force and this cart, it's not moving up or down, and it's not changing velocity up or down. So in other words, its vertical velocity is constant, therefore its vertical forces must be balanced. It's Newton's first law. If forces are balanced, the velocity is constant. If forces are unbalanced, the velocity is changing. So I know that normal force upward has to be equal to the gravitational force downward, and I can indicate that by drawing these single tick marks right there and right there. Those tick marks just mean that this force right here is equivalent to this force down here. So let's say the normal force was 50 newtons. Well, the gravitational force would also have to be 50 newtons. Now the person over here, the person without the bow, they're pulling on the cart with a rope. In this case, this person is pulling to the right. So we've got a tension force to the right that the bowless person is exerting on the cart. But the person with a bow is also exerting a force on the cart. Their hands are actually touching the cart right here. And like I said before, anytime there's two surfaces in contact, we have a normal force. So like before, I'm gonna highlight where those surfaces are. There's the surfaces that are touching. Those are vertical surfaces that are touching, like if hands are touching the cart. And the normal forces is gonna be perpendicular to that. So if the surfaces touching are vertical, that normal force has to be horizontal. In this case, she's pushing the cart to the right. So I have an additional force to the right. It's a normal force, and it's coming from the person with the bow. Notice here we have two normal forces. That's totally possible. We can have two normal forces. We could have two tension forces if there's more than one rope. That's also why it's helpful to write the object that's exerting the force. So I can differentiate between the normal force from the floor and the normal force from the person. Now, are there any forces resisting the motion here? Well, you could say that there's drag, but if we're just pushing this cart along the ground, it's probably moving pretty slow and we're probably gonna neglect drag. There would technically be a tiny amount of drag, but it's gonna be so small, we'll often neglect it just to make our problem simpler. If you're doing a problem in physics class, a lot of times it'll tell you, neglect the drag force. But in general, if something's moving very, very fast, we include the drag. If it's moving not all that fast, then we neglect the drag. There is a significant force here that's gonna be resisting the motion though, and that's gonna be friction. So friction is gonna be pointed to the left, and that's because the object is moving to the right. And that friction is gonna be between the ground and the cart, or the floor and the cart. Now, I indicated that the normal force upward and the gravitational force downward were equivalent. Can we say anything about these horizontal forces? Well, it actually depends on the motion of the cart. Is the cart speeding up, slowing down, or moving at a constant speed? So let's look at all three possibilities. What would be true 
if the tension force plus the normal force, that's the two rightward forces, add up to equal the leftward force, the force of friction. Well, if that were the case, then the forces horizontally would be balanced. And we know if the forces are balanced, the velocity is constant. So if that's the case, we'd have a constant velocity as we move this. In other words, the two forces that the people are exerting on the cart exactly balance out the force of friction, and therefore we have a constant velocity forward. Now, what if their forces that they're exerting on the cart are greater than the force of friction? Well, that means that the rightward forces are greater than the leftward force. And since the cart's moving to the right and the rightward forces are greater, this object is gonna be speeding up. Finally, what if the forces that the people are exerting on the cart are less than the force of friction? So they're not even applying enough force to overcome the friction. Well, if that's the case, the leftward force of friction is greater than the rightward forces that the students are applying. So this object is gonna be slowing down. So if the object's moving to the right, but there's an overall leftward force when we add them up, then the object's gonna be slowing down. Just to recap that real quick, if the horizontal forces are balanced, then the object has a constant velocity. If there's a greater rightward force and the object's moving to the right, it's gonna be speeding up. And if there's a greater leftward force, but the object's moving to the right, then the object's gonna be slowing down. In our second example, we have a cart rolling down a ramp. Again, we'll draw our dot. I'm gonna draw it on the cart here. The force of gravity is pointed directly downward. Even though this is on a ramp, a lot of students wanna draw this force kind of down and to the right, but it's not. It's gonna be exactly downward because that's where the center of the earth is. Next, let's check for any normal forces. I do have two surfaces that are touching. The wheels are touching the ramp, so I'm gonna highlight right there. And now I'm gonna draw a force that's perpendicular to where I highlighted the surfaces touching. Whenever you've got something on a ramp like this, it can be hard to draw a diagonal perpendicular force. So here's what I always tell students to do. Take another sheet of paper. You're gonna line it up with the ramp and the dot right there. So put the piece of paper on there through the dot connected to the ramp, and then use that to draw the normal force acting on the object. So let's draw that in now. So there's our normal force that's acting on the cart, and that's the ramp that's exerting that normal force. This is another example where we could have drag force in there, but it's gonna be pretty small because we've got a cart on a ramp. The velocity is not gonna be super, super fast. It's not gonna be moving like 70 miles an hour or anything like that. So we'll neglect drag in this case, although there would be a tiny, tiny amount of drag probably. But we would have friction, and I think the friction would be significant here. Friction is always gonna be opposite the direction of motion. This cart is moving down to the left, parallel to the ramp, so our friction is gonna be up and to the right, parallel to the ramp, and it's the ramp that's exerting the friction on the cart. In our third example, we have a car driving down the road. So let's draw our free body diagram for it. We'll draw our dot in the middle. Of course, we have gravity downward, and of course, we have normal force upward from the street or the road. And those are gonna be our only vertical forces and the car, it's got a constant vertical velocity, really a vertical velocity of zero, but that's gonna be constantly zero. So those forces must be balanced. We can say that they're equivalent. The person in the car is gonna be hitting the gas pedal, which is gonna be causing the wheels to turn. And as those wheels turn, they're actually gonna be pushing off the ground or pushing the car forward on the ground. Technically, that's a friction force. As the wheel turns, there's a friction force between the tire and the road, and that's what's gonna be propelling it forward. But a lot of times it's confusing to think of that as a friction force because we also have a resistive friction force. Anyway, we often call this an applied force. The car is applying a force, or you can think of the engine applying a force to the wheels to make them turn. So that force going forward, we're gonna call that an applied force. It's kind of a catch-all term for forces that we don't wanna identify as what they really are, so we just call it an applied force. But we'll use that for car examples like this. Now we've got some forces resisting the motion. Of course, we're gonna have a force of friction from the road that's gonna be resisting the motion of the car. And because we're driving down the road in a car, we're gonna have significant drag force. That drag force is gonna be resisting the motion, so it's the opposite direction of motion, and that's really coming from the air. It's pushing air particles out of the way. The air is pushing on the car, resisting its motion. So those are the forces acting on the car. And again, like that example with pushing the box, we could say something about whether that applied force is greater than, equal to, or less than the resistive forces. So what if this car is moving at a constant velocity? Well, if the velocity is constant, that means this applied force that's to the right is gonna be equal to the sum of the two leftward forces. What if the car is speeding up? Well, if the car is getting faster, that means the forces in the direction of its motion must be greater than the forces that are opposite the direction of motion. The car is moving to the right, so that rightward applied force would have to be greater than the sum of the friction and the drag, meaning that the car is speeding up. And what if the car is slowing down? 
Well, if the car is getting slower, that means that applied force is going to be less than the resistive forces. So it's sort of like the friction and the drag are winning. It's going to cause the car to slow down. The applied force isn't enough to keep it going at that constant speed. Here's our fourth example. We're looking at a helicopter. The helicopter, it's tilted forward. That's kind of how helicopters are able to speed up forward. But even though it's tilted at an angle, it's just moving directly to the right. It's not moving at an angle. These lines right here show that the helicopter's blades are spinning. These lines right there show that the helicopter is moving to the right. So let's draw a free body diagram. I'll draw a dot. We've got gravitational force downward on the helicopter. The force from the propellers is one that I didn't cover in my previous video, but this is going to be a thrust force. Anytime we're pushing off of the air in order to move ourselves forward, we call that a thrust. And that thrust is going to be perpendicular to the propellers. So the propellers are at this angle right here. We're going to draw a force perpendicular to that or 90 degrees to that that's also going to go through the dot that we drew for our free body diagram. So let's draw that thrust force. I'm going to use F sub TH for that. And that's really going to be pushing off of the air. The propellers are pushing on the air, which is going to be lifting the helicopter in the direction that it's tilted. Finally, since the helicopter is moving quickly through the air, we're going to have a drag force. The helicopter is moving to the right. So that drag force is going to be resisting that motion. So the drag force is to the left. And that drag force is exerted by the air particles on the helicopter. Notice that the helicopter is not touching any physical surfaces here. So we don't have a normal force present. Normal force is only present when there's surfaces that are touching. So those are three examples to help you understand how to draw free body diagrams. We start by drawing a dot and then we go through all of the forces that we know, drawing them on to our free body diagram. So that's how you draw free body diagrams. Good luck. Alondra, can you apply a normal force to my hand? Good job. Can you wave? <laughs> say good luck, everybody. Good luck, buddy. Okay, say bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. <laughs>